Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be discussing a huge rumor from a credible source on the PlayStation 5 concerning its GPU, CPU, dev kit information, and release date. So if you do enjoy this discussion, please hit the like button and subscribe for more. And now let's get started. So this information comes by way of semiaccurate.com. Now you may remember from 2016, they were the original source that got the partnership between NVIDIA and Nintendo correct, with NVIDIA providing the Tegra X1 processor for the Nintendo Switch, then known as the Nintendo NX. And they also got correct the PlayStation 4 specs in 2012, and now they have PlayStation 5 information that they are sharing on their site. Of course, you need a $1,000 subscription to read the information. However, we're gonna do it right here, free of charge, because thankfully a user at Reset Era does have a membership to their site, and did a summary of the information on Reset Era, which I'll post in the description. So again, I wanna say that even though this information comes from a credible source, it is 100% rumor for now because things can change as we go forward. So first of all, from Semi-Accurate, this article talks about the PlayStation 5 and how it's using AMD's technology. So it's gonna be using AMD. We know that Sony is partner with them and they have been since the PlayStation 4, of course. And as we know, that partnership has gone really well for them so far. The PS4 has sold almost 80 million consoles and the PS4 Pro is a impressive console for the price. So Semi-Accurate reports that AMD is gonna be using their Navi-based GPU architecture for the PlayStation 5. Now they say that it's not gonna be specifically using Navi, but it's gonna be based on it. Now Navi is AMD's next generation GPU that's supposed to be coming out in 2019. Now AMD also has Vega 20 which is also going to be released at the end of 2018 as long as all the scheduling goes correct for them. Now there's some very interesting things here about the power levels of these GPUs. Vega 20 is going to be on a 7 nanometer FinFET process and so is Navi. The current Vega GPUs, even the high-end ones, are at a 14 nanometer FinFET process and those go up to 13 teraflops currently. You guys may not know this but the Vega 20 has been listed as targeting 20 teraflops of single precision. So that is extremely powerful, right? A lot of performance. And what allows that is a seven nanometer process, the smaller chip size and much lower power consumption. Now Navi, since that is beyond Vega, Navi is estimated at being up to 30 teraflops, right? So that is insane when you think about it. Now for PlayStation 5, if PlayStation 5 does use Navi as the base architecture, which obviously isn't ready yet, if it does use that, I estimate it'll be around the 20 teraflops range as well, give or take, because obviously it may not be 30 teraflops because consoles are usually pared down a bit and don't use the full range as a PC GPU would. Now, I'm not saying it couldn't reach 30 teraflops, it's just that we're gonna go ahead and go with 20 because 20 seems like an awful lot, right? So moving on to the CPU, Semer Accurate is rumoring that it is using the Zen, which is Ryzen CPU, which seems kind of obvious right now. It, it seems like Ryzen is the place to go for your CPU needs on PC and on laptops and it's being used quite a bit. Ryzen has been a huge success for AMD and has actually made them hundreds of millions of dollars of profit in the past year. So it makes perfect sense, of course, for Sony to be using Ryzen in PlayStation 5. And what that CPU is gonna do, of course, is going to balance out the GPU basically perfectly because you don't wanna have any bottlenecks in that kind of system like that. However, the article doesn't point out any specific specs for the PlayStation 5, but I just gave you some for the Navi of what it's targeting so you can get an idea of what it can do from there but we're going to talk about that a little bit more about exactly what it could do in just a moment but next they report that a large amount of dev kits have already gone out to developers and then they suggest that a 2018 release of the PlayStation 5 is not out of the question based on the amount of dev kits released and also they report that virtual reality goodies quote unquote are baked in at a silicon level so that most likely means that they are going to be not giving up on virtual reality anytime soon. And obviously the system's gonna have more than enough power to do virtual reality at at least 1080p per eye, I would imagine, with that kind of processing power. So if that is built into the system, you wouldn't have to buy any extra attachments. You could just use your PSVR headset and you're good to go, if that is the case. It sounds like it's quite possible, to be honest with you. 
and I'm not talking about the release date, we'll get to that in a moment, but the VR sounds very likely with the way that things are going with Sony and how they're supporting VR continually and not giving up on it. They must have a reason for that. So let's get back to the processing power of the PlayStation 5. That sounds like an awful lot of power, right? Like. The Xbox One X has 6 teraflops of processing power right now and it can run games like Far Cry 5 at native 4K and it is an extremely good looking game and it's a very powerful console. So the question is what on earth would you need 20 teraflops or more for the next gen of consoles? The answer is two parts really. You have real time ray tracing which is going to be a huge part of next gen and what is going to make the look of next gen so noticeable in comparison to the current generation. If you haven't seen all the videos from GDC on real time ray tracing I really suggest you take a look at it. It is extremely impressive technology they're using but obviously that takes a lot of processing power so they're going to need that to produce real time ray tracing with this next generation of consoles. And AMD has promised that their version of ray tracing is less power hungry than Nvidia's solution to real time ray tracing. So obviously since Sony is in such a good relationship with AMD, they're gonna be using all the tricks in the book for this as well. So real time ray tracing is an extremely impressive GPU effect. And you've seen it in a lot of movies actually. In a lot of these sci-fi movies and superhero movies, they use real time ray tracing to give it a very glossy, realistic effect on computer graphics. Now another interesting note about the power that the next gen is going to bring is deep learning advanced AI technology in these CPUs that they're bringing out in the next few years. And this is going to take a big chunk of that processing power as well. Deep learning is heavy on processing power. So the question is what are these next generation consoles going to be using deep learning for? It's basically for increasing the processing speed of these consoles. Deep learning can be used in basically any form of game development and processing of data. One very good example of this is motion capture technology and how the CPU can learn and adapt to predict certain motions and certain actions in a game before it even happens. So that is where the technology is going. They're most likely going to be using this deep learning technology in order to increase processing speed and to increase development time even because when you think about it a lot of work has to be done in these big budget games like Tomb Raider, Uncharted, you know games like that they use a lot of motion capture technology so theoretically they could use less physical actors and more CPU deep learning prediction in order to predict how the movements of a character will be realistically with minimal amounts of motion capture which would really cut down on development time and cost in producing these games. So that is where I think all that processing power is gonna be used and everything across the board, obviously it's gonna be probably 4K, 60 frames per second with all this deep learning and real-time ray tracing and VR and everything like that. So it's gonna be across the board where that they're gonna be using all this processing power. Now let's get to the release date. Do I think it's coming in 2018? I absolutely do not think that's the case. And the reason is because the PlayStation 4 is selling really well right now. It sold over 20 million consoles in 2017 and it has a lot of exclusives still coming in 2018 and even 2019. I believe Days Gone and The Last of Us 2 is coming in 2019. And most likely Final Fantasy VII Remake is also coming in 2019. There is quite a lot of content still coming for the PlayStation 4 in 2018 and 2019. So I think the soonest they could really release the PlayStation 5 is going to be either 2019, but I really think it's going to be more like 2020 to give the PlayStation 4 its full life and full breadth of titles. So then by 2020, they'll probably pull a PlayStation 4 like they did in 2013 and announce it like in February or March of 2020 and then release it that holiday. That's my estimation because then you give the PS4 its full length and having all its games released that it has currently scheduled for it without of course having any of the games move to PlayStation 5. And so you never want to do that with games promised for a current generation console. And obviously since Sony is the current market leader, if they went to PlayStation 5 right now, all the developers would probably go with them since they've been doing that since the PlayStation 1. Pretty much all third party support has always supported each and every PlayStation console fully. 
So with PlayStation 5, I expect it to be exactly the same. And if they were to do it right now in 2018, that could really affect the competition as in them getting games going forward as well. Like Microsoft, for example, would have to release their next console really quick in order to compete. And who knows what that would do to the Nintendo Switch. It may get even less ports since it already isn't getting very many ports from PlayStation 4 currently. So it remains to be seen, but I do not think 2018 is the release date for PlayStation 5. I still think it's going to be 2020. But like this article says, they're not saying 2018 is going to be the release date for PS5, but they do say it's not out of the question because of dev kits being released. Alright guys, so that's going to do it for this discussion. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button and subscribe for more, and I'll talk to you guys very soon in the next video. Have a great day.